Hi, so um, it is I again, and I'm going to have a slightly different type of video for you today. I'm not going to be actually getting dressed. Um, I'm going to show you a piece of antique clothing, um, and it's the oldest piece that I have. And I'm actually wearing it right now. It is this um, second stage morning jacket from the 1860s. Um, now, I know it's from the 1860s because it has these pagoda sleeves. These very wide sleeves are called pagoda sleeves. And I'm not entirely sure why, because I don't think they look a whole lot like pagodas. Uh, if anybody knows why they're called pagoda sleeves, please tell me. Um, and it would have been worn over either a blouse. Um, actually, since this is just a jacket, it doesn't button up. It would have been worn over a blouse um, or a shirt, some, something sort of like this. This is just a modern shirt from TJ Maxx, I think, I don't know. Um, but it would have been worn over something like this with puffy sleeves and it um, sort of, you know, it fills up this area and I think it does look quite elegant. Um, and I can tell that it's half morning or second stage morning, or later stage morning, because you see the fabric, it is black, but it's shiny, um, which is not something that you would have were able to do in first stage morning. So when your husband died, you would go into full morning, which meant you would wear a very long, thick veil, and your fab your clothing would be all black, and there wouldn't be anything shiny and no jewelry. Uh, in second stage morning, your fabric could become a little bit shiny. See again, shininess. Your fabric could become a little bit shiny. You could start wearing simple jewelry. Uh, jet became very popular uh, in the Victorian era for a kind of later stage morning. Um, and you could also start to introduce little bits of color. This has white braided trim along the sleeves and along the uh, jacket body itself. Um, so that's how I know it was for a later stage morning, but it's, I know that it is for, a, because it does, it's shiny and it has the white trim. But I can also tell that it wasn't just like an everyday jacket because it is primarily black. And back then, if you were wearing black, you were making a statement and that statement was either I am poor and I need something that won't show the dirt or I'm in mourning and this is made out of silk so it wasn't being worn by a poor person um, so that means it was for a later stage of mourning um, so she, but when when the woman who owned this originally was wearing this she'd probably been in mourning for about a year then after a year she would have gone into this later stage so she's already been in black for quite a long time by the time she's wearing this. And sometimes with older, with old kind of second stage morning dresses, you can tell that um, women were very excited to start wearing jewelry again because they don't actually have a button or a clasp or a fastening up here. And there are lots of little holes, little pin holes. So they were just habitually keeping their um, collars closed with brooches. Um, so this is 1860s, so Civil War era. So the woman could have been in mourning for a husband or a son uh, who died in the Civil War, which I think is rather exciting. Um, can't think of any more information. Oh, yes, I can. So it is also very interesting how it forces you to hold your shoulders. I'm going to... here. So when I have my shoulders held back like this in this kind of very kind of stiff but very proper looking posture it fits very nicely and you can see there's no wrinkling or folding or there shouldn't be there's you know there's not really any wrinkling or folding here when i roll my shoulders forward in a more modern posture it doesn't fit it feels very tight across here and right here and you can see it wrinkles and pulls in a very unattractive way so clothing from uh, the 1800s, early 1900s, really was cut to force you to have a really good posture. This is how you showed you were an upright citizen of society, because you were literally upright. So you really couldn't slouch in a lot of these clothes. Women also had corsets, of course. Those really kept you upright. And I've never worn any men's clothing from the time period, but I've talked to people who have. And they say that it's the shoulders, in particular, are cut so... They really pull your your shoulder back. There's a weird cut in the back that pulls your shoulders back like this. Um, so this so clothing really was, um, especially more formal clothing, really was 
cut to force you to be in this very upright, proper position. Um, now, if I were wearing the whole outfit, I'm clearly not <laughs> dressed for morning. This Swiss waist is accurate for the 1860s. Um, I could be wearing this depending on what stage of morning. In a slightly later stage, I could wear a white shirt waist. I'd probably, when I just got out of the first stage of morning, I'd probably wear this with a black shirt. Uh, and then, of course, a black skirt, not this plaid. Although, plaids were popular in the 1850s and 60s, um, but not for morning, obviously. And, of course, I would be wearing my hoop skirt, which I cannot find because I just moved house. Um, <laughs> and it is still spirited away somewhere. Um, yeah. So I can't think of any other information about it, but it's really impressive, I think, the number of things you can learn from wearing uh, an antique garment. Um, and even if you can't wear, even if you can't wear the things, uh, if you can see them on somebody else. So a lot of the stuff that I have, I am six feet tall, um, and I just cannot fit into a lot of um, historical clothing. So, but I do have some very petite friends, so sometimes I will dress them up in my historical clothing, or also with my um, young cousins who are at eight and ten. Um, and you can learn a lot about these articles of clothing just by seeing them being worn, but it's best of all if you can wear them yourself. Um, and you can really learn so much about how people lived. Um, one thing that I've learned from... Oh. I have dogs. One thing that I've learned from wearing period clothing is that um, Victorian furniture, although it feels very uncomfortable to modern people when we sit on it, when you're wearing all of the Victorian layers, it is not uncomfortable because you're not supposed to be leaning back against the back of the sofa or whatever. You're supposed to be kind of perched. And for women, you'd be um, using your corset as support. For men, you'd be using your core muscles. Um, so it really does... I also have a parrot. Um, I like animals. And, and he's uh, very needy. Um, so you would also be... Men would be using their core muscles. So you weren't supposed to be leaning back and slobbing out like we do today. It was made to kind of... You, you were supposed to perch. Can I sit on the... Yeah, you're supposed to perch very elegantly. So if you are wearing the clothes, a lot of the kind of weird things about the time period, like the uncomfortable seeming furniture, makes a lot more sense. Also, cars in the early 1900s, they're these really... They're either open air or they had these really weird, funny, upright cabs. Um, and also, carriages were either open air or they were kind of very strangely shaped. And that makes, suddenly makes a lot of sense if you try to get out of a modern car wearing a floor-length skirt and a corset, and especially if you're wearing a hat. Um, the hats are really problematic because um, a lot of them have feathers that go up um, in, in, you know, in crazy ways. So it's really difficult to squish yourself into a car, to get into a car, and to get out of a car. I um, drove to the grocery store earlier today wearing this jacket and it was incredibly difficult and uncomfortable because the car just was not made to accommodate something that holds me like this. Uh, I learned my lesson, I will never drive in it again. Uh, but it's really, you can understand so much about why some of these things that they had in the past were so, so weird to us that it actually starts to make a lot of sense. Um, so I plan on doing more videos like this showing off actual antique garments. Um, I have a hat from the 1890s that's going to be coming up in a video soon. Um, I have a bodice from the 1910s, a few uh, Edwardian shirt waists, um, and a dress from the 1910s too, but I left that at school. And uh, I am not at school right now, <laughs> and so I will sh record that video after Christmas break is over. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this.